The following special event is brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Welcome to Steve Saban's fourth annual tribute to Halloween entitled, The Coroner. We'll perform autopsies on unplaced cases from the files of the declined, the postponed, and the heavily rated. Our expose on life insurance underwriting to usher in the substandard season. And throughout the week, we'll be giving away our underwriting guide of the top 10 commonly seen conditions. And on today's show, how to determine what type of underwriting to use. Part two of this week's series on impaired risk underwriting. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Over half of all Americans who own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and overpaying for coverage. Now's the time to secure a second opinion. And why I'm securing a second opinion, I need to look at the types of underwriting. And there are a couple forms that we want to look at. And that underwriting, here is one of ours, and one of it's called Quick Quotes. When I'm doing quick quotes, I'm looking at something just to get in the game. I'm not going to send it into an informal. I'm not going to write an application. I just want to be able to look at the what is the basic idea and do what's called a premium tolerance quote. So when I see my options for underwriting, the first thing I want to do is pre qualify of the case by using a premium tolerance test. What that's going to do is going to get me in the game. I call it a bookend quote. And that will help me understand, should I really go forward with this with an informal or should I go forward with a full application? So when I'm doing a quick quote, I like to use a system that helps him because quick quotes and informals, I don't know where to go on it. So I use an eBix, their health uh, questionnaire, which is really good because it'll tie into their system and it'll show me everybody based on the protocols and their underwriting requirements. So when I'm looking at a basic, uh, uh, application like this, I can go ahead and measure this. It'll actually give me a quote and give me all the carriers. And let's say in this case that it turned out to be table B. So if I use height and weight, I can just plug that number in. I can answer the tobacco question. Are they using it? Have they ever used it? I'm going to be looking at blood pressure. I'm going to be looking at cholesterol levels, family history, medical history, driving record, alcohol and substance abuse, and I'm going to be looking at hazardous sports as well as criminal activity if there's any. Now, the reason why I want to go through this is because it's going to plug in to most of the carriers in the term and the permanent market. And that'll give me a pretty good idea whether you're using term insurance, level term, or you're using GUL, Guaranteed Universal Life. The basic platform will get you in the game. So I'm going to go through all the questions in here saying, like, what is your systolic blood pressure level? What is your, uh, your uh, are you taking any medication? If you say yes, you want to put, it'll drop down and open up a box and you'll be able to put the medication, what they're taking. And then the cholesterol level. What is your cholesterol level? What is your HDL rush level? And are you taking any cholesterol meds? All this is important when we're doing scripts because they're going to be doing MIB and script checks eventually. I might as well find out right now. And this is going to actually input, it's going to put debits or credits on my quote. When I'm doing a quick quote, I need to look at a few things on family history. The demarcation line right now seems to be age 70. So I'm going to be looking at what happened in your family before age 70. What really occurred in your their life? And is there anything that's going to tie that to the proposed insured? And then I'm going to look at medical history. One of the things that we have found about medical history is we're going to be ordering attending physician statements. Those attending physician statements are going to be the physician's actual kind of what I would say resume on your health. And that history, that medical history will play huge in, our, in the underwriting decision. So if I have a little bit of family history before I go and order APSs, I may be able to get an idea where it lays out and I'll be able to make a decision. Remember, if you've been in this business as long as I have, you pretty much know where the categories are going to fall into and where you're going to look at what uh, underwriting offer you're going to get. Family history plays a role. Now, my medical history with that, and putting my APSs and family history together, that could factor in huge. But I've noticed lately, more and more, lifestyle credits, and we're pulling a little bit away from family history. So we might be able to see a little bit more benevolent underwriting because of that change. Driving record, this is a huge issue. They're going to check your MVR to see what kind of DUIs, race, uh, racing, uh, speeding tickets, things that really could impact that. And another thing, of course, is alcohol or drug abuse. Alcohol or drug abuse is a huge issue. And remember, this could impact your underwriting and it could really actually put flat extras or maybe even 
full tables or a postponement, depending upon how long you've been out in rehab, whether it's been alcohol, whether it's been drugs, they're going to look at alcohol abuse. Another one that's really big is foreign travel. The reason I bring this up on foreign travel is because with the Ebola outbreak now, we're looking at all kinds of issues on foreign travel. This could have a major impact on underwriting. Even when you're looking at simple travel to Canada or Mexico, they're still asking, did you travel? Did you travel outside the United States? And they want you to declare that. There are certain carriers that are really right now benevolent to foreign travel, but now they've all been impacted by the recent news with Ebola, and we're going to have to kind of watch where that all lays out. And we're also going to want to know, is this client a U.S. resident or not? It really plays in huge. So I need to know, is the client here a foreigner? And if so, we have actually carriers that are really good for people who are not really U.S. citizens, but have a green card or permission to work in the United States. And unless, again, hazardous sports, whether you're a race car driver or you're a mountain climber, they'll want to know those things because those have actual recreational risks to it, and I'll be able to price that in in my bid. And the last one, criminal uh, activities. They want to know what's been involved. And if it's just maybe something petty and it's misdemeanor, that's probably not going to be as big an issue as if you have an actual felony. So those are just some of the ideas that we're looking at when we're doing a quick quote. We're just trying to price, and we use EBIC system to do this to get us in the game. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate their agent population as they once did. But now you can have a quick synopsis of the top 10 commonly seen conditions at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your prospects. Just email me for your copy of the top 10 commonly seen conditions at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. We're talking about different types of underwriting. We've talked about in previous segments, we've talked about just doing quick quotes. And sometimes in formals, when you actually send APSs and information, that's not really gonna be qualified as a formal app, and we're just trying to get the underwriter to give us an idea where it's gonna fall out in an offer. And we might send that package to several different carriers, depending upon the impairment. Remember, certain impairments with certain carriers really fit together well, and it could really help in your final offer and help you close the case. Some of the things I want to talk about today, though, this is a little different because sometimes when you're looking at a case like this, you're looking at what, what can I really do? I have formal application. Everybody knows that. But I could punt and do simplified issue or guaranteed issue. And sometimes when I'm looking at this, some, maybe my client really doesn't want to go through a full pyramid. Maybe they're a little bit reluctant about uh, getting APSs or they can't find the doctor. Sometimes you're looking at group cases that use simplified and or guaranteed. But let's look at this for a second because I think you're going to see this as a pretty cool idea. This is a basic chart that really maps out some of the basic ideas of the carriers at play in this. And look at the actual categories. We have the carrier in the first category, the type of product, which could be term or perm. It could be the death benefit range in which they issue simplified issue. It could be their underwriting requirements. It could be their age range, the rating class that they look at. And of course, lastly, they look at their options and riders that are available. And really important, especially if it's term, is it convertible to their permanent product? And by the way, a little side note on that, you'll want to make sure that even you want to make sure that if you're going to think about converting this later on, you want to make sure it's a decent uh, permanent product. And of course, hopefully, if they have a track record for that, you'll be able to be able to select. That could be a bubble case issue where you could say, boy, I don't know which carry to go with. Maybe conversion to a really good permanent product may be actually the tipping point. Now, I'm just looking at some of the basics here. Notice that where this is gone, simplified issue. There are companies now they're giving up to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And really, some of these start as low as $50,000, so you have, or $25,000, you have a quite a bigger range for simplified issue. And some of these will have a short app. Some will only look at MVR, your MIB, your script check. They're just with the application. So if you can stay within the death benefit range, you'll notice that on all these options, you have several different options. In fact, I'm looking at one carrier here that goes from $25,000 all the way up to $400,000 in simplified issue. Simplified issue is really a great position to punt to, especially when you need to really get something underwritten or your client really doesn't want to go through full pyramid and have their whole APS and collect all that information. It's really a great idea. It's really come of age. And I would say in the last three to five years, there are some major players in simplified issue. I do want to touch a little bit base 
as you go down and you look at the rest of this, the market, there are some that will break this out by age and by death benefit. So remember, just because I say 350, before you ever go ahead and check for simplified issue, always check with the carrier first and make sure that these products are always available in your state. I'm looking at the last couple here that's really micromanaging. You can see they're breaking out the death benefit range and they're underwriting questions. They may have a short uh, underwriting app and their issue age and how far they'll go out Interesting enough, some of these cases go surprisingly simplified issue from anywhere from 26 years of age to age 80. Some of them even go down to age 18. And so let's look at guaranteed issue. Guaranteed issue is when you're looking at carriers or clients who just can't really pass a simplified issue. They really have knockout questions. I can't really write them in a formal app. There's no reason to go to informal because we already know it's going to be a problem. So I start looking at three or four carriers that actually will issue. Most of them are a whole life. They have a graded benefit. You pay a regular level premium. They're not going to have any real big questions here. They're just a few um, what I would call big questions, but really the, they're basically guaranteed issue and that guaranteed issue could go from zero all the way up to about 10,000. Some of them go to 25,000 now. And so you'll want to look at which client really fits the profile for guaranteed issue. If I can't do a regular formal app, if I can't do simplified issue, I might be looking at guaranteed issue to make sure I can place my case with my gun. Again, you're looking at different underwriting ideas and different strategies and tactics to approach a client, whether it's a quick quote, an informal, a full formal application, a simplified issue, or a guaranteed issue. Remember, over half of Americans who own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and overpaying for coverage. Now's the time to secure a second opinion. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just go out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow. Today was part two of our five-part series on life insurance underwriting. To order your free copy of the top 10 commonly seen conditions, just go to downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. And remember, over half of all Americans who own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and are overpaying for coverage. Now is the time to secure a second opinion with the largest in-house underwriting staff in the brokerage community. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage Advisor. Happy Halloween.